Okay, welcome to those that have joined us here in council chambers, as well as those that are watching from home. This is a work session of the Pocosin City Council. We're here this evening to talk about um, items that are on the agenda this evening, uh, specifically about uh, legacy of Pocosin, and it's uh, five separate items. Uh, Wally, I know you're prepared to give us uh, a brief of what's going on, what's going through planning commission and the like. If you will just, uh, Randy, do you have any kickoff things? No, uh, except to say that we're going to walk through the items in, in, the, mm -hmm. in the order that they will appear later on your agenda. If it's okay with council, I would ask you to sort of hold your questions towards the end. That oftentimes, two slides later, we may have the answer to your question already queued up. Um, and so if, if that's possible, and if you have a burning question, obviously, uh, please ask it. But um, if possible, if you'd wait to the conclusion of Wally's comments, we may be able to better address your questions. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Wally. Thank you. As the uh, city manager just uh, indicated to you, I'm going to try to take all the requests in the order in which we've got them. Um, okay. Just get a few preliminaries out of the way first. Uh, advertisement dates. These were legally advertised for the Planning Commission on August 30th, 2019 and September 6, 2019, in the Daily Press. Uh, for City Council, it was advertised November 2nd, November 6th, and we went ahead and posted it for November 8th just to make sure that everybody had plenty of notification. Um, the Planning Commission did conduct public hearings on six requests on September 16, 2019, voting to postpone recommendation on all six of those requests until October 21, 2019. The Planning Commission subsequently made a recommendation on five of the requests at its October 21, 2019 meeting, five because buffer modification request number two was withdrawn by the applicant prior to that hearing. Um, Prior to that meeting, I should say. This is a, a lot of information on one page, but these are basically the five applications. Uh, the first one, and I will take that first, will be the request for a proper amendment to change the timeline in which community clubhouse and pool must be constructed. Now, the applicant did send in a letter today uh, stating that uh, it would be from prior to the 80th single family and or townhome building permit to prior to the 120th. Uh, single-family Anahart townhome building permit, and I'll try to integrate that in my comments. Uh, second is request for rezoning amendment to approve townhome elevations that were not submitted with the original set of approved elevations. Then we get to the buffer modifications. Uh, area number one, uh, to reduce the 40-foot perimeter buffer to 10 feet, uh, which is to be from... Uh, uh, indications given at the Planning Commissions to be at the Planning Commission meetings uh, included in recorded lots, but which shall remain undisturbed. Um, buffer modification number three, undisputed legacy uh, master plan to reduce the 40-foot perimeter buffer to five feet in order to provide room for the development of the commercial space located along a portion of the Victory Boulevard frontage as well as the required parking to serve the commercial space. And I will, of course, get to that later. Uh, the last request that we'll look out tonight will be the request for a modification to Area 4, uh, reducing the 40-foot perimeter buffer to 5 feet to provide for a T turnaround at the terminus of Street A as shown on the master plan. 5-foot buffer would be maintained in grass. That's also true of the request uh, for Area Number 3. Okay, so I'll start with the proper amendment. Um, uh, this is a copy of the approved master plan on uh, August 24, 2015. And basically what this is, and I, I don't want to stray too far from the microphone, uh, but basically what this is is um, you can see the long stretch of Legacy Boulevard that needs to be constructed in order to get to the clubhouse and the pool. Uh, the original request was basically was going to include all of Phase 1, but now... Uh, it will be prior to the 120th uh, townhome or um, single-family dwelling, which will be within Phase 1. Phase 1 is currently being reviewed by staff. Uh, we still have a fair amount of comments that the applicant needs to address, uh, but it will be in Phase 1. 
uh, based on the uh, request that we received today. Uh, this is the existing area. I think everybody knows where uh, Legacy is now, but this is just to indicate uh, that it is a uh, an undeveloped parcel or assemblage of parcels, I should say. Uh, and this is the uh, the uh, shown uh, overimposed on the zoning map. Uh, of course, this area, and I'll get to this in a minute, but this area is basically all within the planned unit development mixed use uh, overlay district. Uh, even that little finger right there that was added uh, as part of the hearings back in 2015. All right, this is the site plan that we're looking at again. Um, this was uh, a little more important <laughs> before we got the, uh, the amendment to the request. This is just basically there's 146 units proposed within phase one. So if we had stayed with the 147, that would effectively put that off into a future phase. But what, again, uh, what they have done is they are now proposing to uh, complete the clubhouse and the pool, which would be, uh, well, it looks like north, but it's actually south uh, of, of this development. But that would be triggered uh, by the, uh, the homes and townhomes built within phase one, uh, 120. Okay, again, the key points um, <laughs> changed a little bit uh, because of the request today. Uh, it will not postpone construction of the clubhouse until the future phase. It will be included in phase one. Uh, there's no timetable for when phase one will get built. Uh, it is currently under review, and, uh, you know, certainly the intention is to get to work on phase one as soon as, you know, we clear all the comments. As I say, we have a few of those still left to go. Um, there is no guarantee that phase one will get built, although I would say that phase one is well within the uh, development process right now. So uh, it would, it, at this point, they're in it quite a ways into phase one rather than the pullout uh, at this point. The Planning Commission on October 21st did vote 4 to 2 to recommend approval of this request to City Council. And keep in mind that request was, was basically a, the original amendment to put off the uh, construction to before the 147th. What you've got today is a modified amendment uh, that actually triggers the construction of that clubhouse and pool sooner than uh, what was proposed in front of the Planning Commission. Okay, so at that point, that's the proffer amendment. Uh, we go into the rezoning amendment, and a rezoning amendment is essentially to introduce some new um, townhomes, um, and townhomes are the only area affected, not, not the single-family homes. Uh, in 2015, uh, the previous rendering, and really this was the only rendering that's included in the application materials and that were submitted, this was H.H. H. Hunt drawing, and you can see that it's, uh, it's fairly upscale in, in that it uh, includes some open air porches, includes some dormers, uh, and, and recessed, uh, uh, I think, uh, yeah, recessed, slightly recessed doorways anyway. Um, and, and of course, different massing of the buildings. This kind of protrudes out in front of these areas, and this uh, protrudes out a little bit that way. So what I'm going to go through rather quickly is just some of the designs that they are proposing as part of this rezoning amendment. Uh, these are all, as I understand it, uh, Ryan homes and some, um, some uh, Hunt homes. But the Hunt homes are not really labeled. The, the Ryans are uh, the Composer rear load, that's a Ryan. Uh, Composer front load, also a Ryan. Um, this is a new rendering. I'm not sure if it's H.H. H. Hunt or Ryan, but uh, it's one of the new ones that would be considered. Um, this one is a Hunt, I believe. Uh, and again, I'm kind of thumbing right through these to give you an idea. Uh, Calvert rendering, this is a, uh, front, um, a front loaded, uh, another front loaded, Calvert 6, and these are just basically design names. They're all, these are Ryan homes, but they're uh, different different house model names. Uh, Hepburn exterior rear load, uh, 
uh, in other words, carts are loaded to the rear. Uh, that's one um, also loaded to the rear. Um, and that's, that's all the designs that I had. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, these are, uh, as I pointed out here, they're not quite as elaborate as the original H.H. Hunt townhome type. Um, they sort of straddle uh, the, the gamut, if you will, or run the gamut uh, from lesser to, to more upscale, I guess I would say. Um, the main thing that's interesting in this, though, is there's really no indication of where the differing townhome types will be placed within the townhome area. We just don't know. And uh, one of the things the applicant volunteered uh, at the Planning Commission is that they don't really know because these are going to be sold to the, uh, the house, the home builder. Uh, and they can correct me where I'm wrong or elaborate. Uh, there's no indication of what numbers of what designs would be built within the townhome area. Uh, composer rear load and composer front load townhomes lacks, clearly lacks some of the features included on HH Stunt townhomes, uh, townhomes submitted and approved on 824.15. Additional models come closer to the original HH Hunt. As I say, they kind of run the gamut uh, submitted, although lacking in several features, most principally the open air porches. Uh, the com Planning Commission on October 21st did vote six to zero unanimously um, among the members that were there to recommend approval of this request to the City Council. So we did recommend for that. Okay, moving on to discussion of the buffers. First thing I need to get across is that in 2015 we did implement, I'll say, our first mixed-use overlay district. And this is a representation of where it is. Here's Legacy. Legacy is basically right in, in that area. And later, as I said earlier, in 2015, this area was added as well into the PUDMU. This area was not the, uh, not the adjoining property, however, to the, to the development. So um, that being the case, when we look at the origin of the modification request, Waivers are covered by Section 8.4-5A. Does require a 40-foot landscaped or naturally wooded buffer around the perimeter of the project, and uh, of course that can be included in the open space requirement. It can be waived by the City Council if the proposed district's perimeter proposed district's perimeter boundary lies adjacent to property subject to the same PUD MU district designation and comprehensive plan. In other words, it could be waived here. It can't be waived back here because it adjoins property that is outside of the planned unit development mixed use overlay. But it can be here. Really, it affects buffer uh, modification number number three and number four. Um, okay. The applicant instead of asking for a waiver, did want to uh, offer something in return for the modification, and that is actually covered under 8.2-2. Um, and the last part of that second paragraph allows for additional waivers or modification of the requirements of the zoning subdivision site plan or sign ordinances subsequent to the approval of the master plan. Well, obviously, we're subsequent now. And there must be reviewed by the Planning Commission and City Council pursuant to 8.2-7 and 8.2-8, which is uh, why we're here tonight, uh, one of the reasons anyway. Uh, therefore, uh, three modifications are requested. Uh, and we've already had the public hearing with the Planning Commission, and uh, we're having the public hearing here tonight with the City Council. This is the chart that I did, and uh, I did leave buffer number two in here. Um, I probably should have taken it out. Apologize for that. But uh, this is, and, I, and I'll get more specific on these as we break down each request. But the main reason for this chart right here was to indicate what we did back in 2015. Uh, in 2015, the required 40-foot buffer uh, adjacent to York County and City Hall property was uh, replaced with rear yards only. So in other words, instead of being 40 feet back, uh, homes can be 15 feet back. 
Also, there is no requirement for any preservation of trees. It can be landscaped. It can be as, as, as little as 0% wood. Um, and that was really in response to some concerns by the Planning Commission and trying to understand just what we had done previously. Here's modification number one. Modification number one covers an uh, area adjacent to the, uh, the white property, and, uh, which is owned R1, uh, which means that uh, long term the use most likely in that area is going to be residential, uh, whether it's a subdivision, uh, whether it's an open space subdivision or a typical uh, cookie cutter type subdivision. Um, uh, above modification request, this is actually Mr. Myers' handwriting. Uh, I had him come in. But one actually includes this little area up here, too. So, so that's all included as buffer modification request number one. That comes out to 2,190 linear feet. Uh, a 40-foot buffer uh, would give you 87,600 square feet, and the area in acreage would be 2.01. That would just be within the buffer. Uh, a 10-foot buffer is going to give you about half an acre. Um, so it's going to be quite a decrease in that, uh, in, in the buffer. And again, in the buffer, you know, when, when you're looking at it, it's 40 feet back from the property line versus really 15 because you've got a 15-foot rear yard. So there is some difference in the proximity of the homes to the ultimate property line. Um, Key points for modification number one, uh, I want to stress this really hard because this is a little bit misunderstood. I feel like after the first hearing, uh, the public hearing, no additional lots over the limit of the 238 single family units, 108 townhome units and 11 cottages, 200 apartments for that matter, but we're not there yet, established by approval of the master plan on 8-24-15. We're not going to exceed that. And the developer will tell you that they're going to lose quite a few of those lots and will be, uh, will not, probably not be very close to those numbers by the time we get through here. On the application, uh, the applicant stated that the attempt was to limit the loss of at least eight, dot, eight lots due to buffers and recent conversations with the applicant, that's more like 13 lots. Uh, as I stated earlier, adjacent to the R1 area, residential use is likely. If the option to landscape the buffer area is taken in accord with ordinance provisions, the ordinance calls for either a landscaped or a naturally wooded buffer, or a naturally natural buffer. This modification, that is, the modification to 10 feet, could result in more trees or wooded area being preserved. Largely, this is due to two factors. There's really no definition, I've said city ordinances, but there's no real definition of landscaped, certainly in the planned unit development, mixed use development ordinance. Um, there is a 10 foot undisturbed area that is proposed. Undisturbed means undisturbed. Staff will interpret that to mean that nothing goes in that area, not even accessory uses such as sheds or anything of that nature, undisturbed. Okay, the Planning Commission at its October 21st, 2000 meeting did vote 5-1 to one to recommend denial of this request to City Council. Modification number three is the modification up around the commercial area at the very front. And you can probably illustrate that better on this map. Basically, it concerns this building and this parking area right here. It does not include, let me just, I know I'm going ahead, but it does not include getting rid of this 40-foot buffer that staff has required uh, in accordance with the ordinance through the review process. Now, we'll talk about that street here in a minute, but as a result of this buffer modification, there will be no impact on that 40-foot. Basically, you're talking about 321 linear feet. Buffer area would be 0.29 acres uh, and will be reduced to 0.04 acres. Will be kept in grass. Key points for modification number three, in staff's mind anyway. 
attempt to limit the loss of commercial building and parking lot for the same. It abuts research and development zone property, which uh, I think I can probably show pretty much here. That's the Tudor property right there. Um, um, the commercial element of the project is a principle that makes the project mixed use. This is probably the most important bullet point under here. This is supposed to be a mixed use development project. And in order to hold on to the mixed use, there has to be a viable commercial part of this development. And, and this is where it is. It's right up there off of Victory, where, where Legacy Boulevard is going to intersect uh, when you come out of Victory. Uh, the aesthetics of the Legacy Project for Victory Boulevard would likely be disrupted by a change in building design. Why do I say that? I say that because right now you've got two similar looking buildings and you go down to and you see the fountain as you go down there. Obviously, if you take this and that away, if they're going to make it up anywhere, it's 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 not going to it's not going to have that symmetrical look. That was. Uh, OK, the 40 foot required buffer large aquifer run drainage will be unaffected by the modification. That's true. I pointed that out earlier. Uh, the only way to eliminate space for parking would be to provide for relocation spaces, which, as I alluded to a minute ago, does not appear to be feasible. And any relocation would necessitate a reworking of the phase one plan still under review and would further jeopardize the profitability of the entire project. Uh, when you look at all these requests, they're all sort of under the umbrella of, of trying to um, maintain the profitability of this venture from the development standpoint. Uh, the Planning Commission at its October 21st, 2019 meeting did vote six to zero to recommend approval of this request to the City Council. Which brings us to modification number four. Wally? Yes, sir. Yeah. Could you do me a favor and go back to the previous one just for a minute? And Be happy to, to. Go to the map and let me look at the map there just for a second. Which one? Is that the one you right wanted? Right okay. there. You're, you're right there. Just, right. I just want to take a look at it. And we're talking about right behind those commercial buildings right there. Okay. Yes, sir. Right here. Right. Okay. Well, I may have been Well, the commercial is not depicted on that map. Go to, building, the go, I, go to I, the one that depicts the commercial. Let me answer the question better. Remember, this is your that is your phase one site plan, and the commercial buildings are not in phase one. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. Right. I, I, I inadvertently pointed this out, so I apologize for that. The yep. parking is on this side of the fountain. So that backs up to a parking lot? Is that what that is? Right. Okay. 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 Did that answer the question? Okay. All right. Buffer modification number four. This is the area of the turnaround. Um, it was mentioned as a T turnaround. Uh, I suppose that a turnaround is probably going to take up that same amount of space, regardless of what kind of turnaround it is. Um, this is the actual turnaround that's shown on the master plan. And it is a T turnaround. You'll note that on this master plan, sorry, don't want to get too far from the mic. You'll notice on the master plan that there is no 40 foot buffer depicted through this whole area. That comes into play with the site plan because obviously we, uh, we uh, instituted the ordinance requirements for this development. But my point being that the T turnaround is really not in any different position proposed now than it was on the master plan. Just wanted to kind of get that out there. I used 100 linear feet because that's what it scaled out to on my scale. Could be a little bit more, could be a little bit less. Um, depending on the, uh, the requirements that are in play. But uh, you can see that it's, uh, it's 4,000 square feet to start with, which is like 0.09 of an acre. The buffer would take it down to 
a one of an acre, uh, a five foot buffer for maintaining grass. Is this on the original master plan? Here's the original master plan right here. The answer is yes. Okay, this is the phase one site plan that we're reviewing right now. This was necessitated by comments made by the emergency service people and actually backed up by engineering too because there's a valve in here that needs, that will need maintenance from time to time, um, from time to time. So one of our comments was to show the T turnaround in accord with the master plan. Um, which leads us to where we are today. Uh, if, if they're not able to encroach into that 40-foot buffer, the applicant maintains they'll lose one or two lots, okay? And at this point, they're trying to salvage whatever they can. So, key points. Wally, without I'm sorry. the turnaround, that's just a dead end road. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, it's just a dead-end road. Uh, and, and really, when you look at it, there's about three to four uh, townhomes here that really have no other access except by that street A. So if there is a fire or anything, and of course, we've got ladder trucks now, as we're all well aware, uh, you're not going to be able to get in there and back out without some sort of a turnaround. Uh, and, and, and as far as maintenance of, of the valve, too, the blow-off valve. I mean, you know, you, you got to get some big equipment back there. Okay. Again, no additional lots over 238 single family, 108 townhome and 11 cottages are contemplated here. This is an attempt to limit the loss of one to two townhome lots due to the T turnaround location. The 40 foot required buffer along Oxford Run drainage will be maintained elsewhere along the east side of phase one. And I did not make that adequately clear. But this will be the only intrusion, the 40 foot buffer, the rest of the way will be unimpeded or uninfringed upon. I'll make up a new word. Uh, let's see. In phase one plans, the location of Street A has remained with no turnaround in order to account for the 40 foot buffer. Uh, which we've commented on. The granting of the modification would allow for the T turnaround in basically the same area as depicted on the original master plan approved back in August of 2015. The Planning Commission at its October 21st, 2019 meeting did vote 5-0 to zero to recommend denial of this request to City Council. That pretty much wraps up my sliding through the, the, the different applications, uh, be happy to take any questions. Who owns the buffer? Who owns the buffer? Oh, who owns the buffer? Um, the buffer is going to be owned by Legacy. It's also right now still owned by uh, Ben Hahn, a good part of it is. No, no. Who's going to own it after they're sold? Well, right now they're showing to put it in a homeowners association. So it'll be... It'll be the Big Woods development be, until they it's sell 51 percent. Common property that's yes owned by a homeowners association. Yes, correct. Uh, Wally, I thought in the planning commission meeting that was answered by the developer. And the notes I have say that it was going to be part of the homeowners' lots. That it was not going to be part of an HOA. I believe that's buffer modification number one that you're talking about. But the it, am I right? Yeah. Okay. They're well, it not would have yes. to be approved to do that. Right. right. That's the nuance in the question. Without modification, they will be owned by the HOA. And with one of the app modifications, they'll actually be owned by the, under, by the property owner. Correct? Yes, yes. The, and the, the, the first modification request, which is the, the largest one, I guess you would say, uh, so that is going to be, be on homeowner's lots. Yes. yes. So if we approve the modification to reduce the buffer to 10 feet, who's going to own that? That's going to be the individual homeowner that buys that lot. Okay. Wiley, while we're talking about that one, can you um, hop back to the 
this side for modification. Sorry about this. <laughs> Give everybody a headache, I'm sure. Um, it's got to be a better way to do this that I don't know. But. Go the other way. I think you messed it. I think you. Oh, I did. You're right. You're right. I sure did. I kept right on going then. I... Okay. Yes. All right, okay. Okay. Can... All right. A few, two more slides and it'll okay. be. All right, right here. Yes. Uh, just, and please correct me if I'm wrong and what I, just stop me. If we approve this, okay, there will be a 10 foot buffer of trees along that area if, if this is approved, yes. okay? And because of our, the wording in our current ordinance, if we deny it, it goes by the landscape term that you highlight here. So that means the developer could, if we deny this, clear that and consider it landscaped with grass. Well, I think, I think we'd want a few trees and shrubs in there too, okay. but we don't really have an ordinance, not in the PUD you and would, you, we don't you have would any. Want or you would want or is that a requirement? Right. I don't think. That's what I'm asking. I, well. took the, I took the opportunity to look up the term landscaping in the dictionary, and what I found was that it's a combination of grass, flowers, trees, and shrubs. So he so, could replant it, basically. Is what, so what, what, what I'm saying is, is yeah. if, if, if this is denied, and I'm not, this is all theoretical, what the developer could do is clear it the whole way to the property line and plant a, a strip of, of tulips. There's your landscape. What, m the point I'm trying to make is the only way we are assured to have a buffer of trees in that area is approving this. Correct. Of the current, to keep 10 feet of the current, at least 10 feet of the current trees there right now is to approve this. If not, the whole thing could be cleared. And because of, we don't define landscaped, there, there's nothing stopping the developer from clearing it all, planting grass, and one strip of tulips. But would it make sense for them to pay to clear trees they don't have to pay, to have to clear? Would it be less expensive for them right. to keep the trees than pay to clear them and plant new stuff? So, developers about saving right. money. So do we have, I'm looking at a map here of where we have buffers and where we do not. Do we have buffers on the other side of the development? Uh, let me get up. For this side right here? Yes. Basically in 2015, we replaced the 40-foot buffers with rear yards only. So I would say you could make a good argument that that's really not a buffer. Right. So you don't have buffers on the other side of the development, which is against York County. Yes, sir. But you do have buffers against those folks that are that are on the Pocosin side. Yes, right now. Um, of course, we're going to take the uh, This was the same type of buffer that was given over here. 40 foot, that was basically 50 yards. So, um, and going back to the to the original diagram that he gave us, did, were buffers ever shown on the master plan? Buffers were not shown on the master plan. Yeah. All right. That, um, that was, oh, sorry, go ahead. All right, so then um, let's go to your comments on the, because I'm, I'm kind of unclear on uh, this item on the elevations. We say, recommend, request a rezoning amendment to approve townhome elevations. Yes, sir. And what you're presenting is townhome designs. Right. In the, in the context of elevations, it means exterior appearance. Okay. So it's not, it's not like the apartments, which are four-story versus three-story. We're not talking about... We're not talking about height. 
even though the word is elevation. That's correct, and I have no idea what the origin of that word is, but in my entire I just career, took it, I exterior took it directly appearance from has been referred to as the exterior elevation. I've, okay, that's I, fine. I took it from the application, okay. but you're right. I, I, I can, I can sure enlighten you on that a little bit. Yeah. Right. When you do typically house drawing plans, when you design and build houses, the drawings that show the front, back, and sides of the house are called the elevation drawings. Then there are floor plans, foundation plans, and so forth. That's the way elevations are used in this. Okay. And then uh, my last question on the the uh, the area of the turnaround. All right. So he brought a, he brought a master plan in probably after we found out that there was a 40 foot buffer without a, without a turnaround in it. And in your yeah. comments back to him, that be the city staff, you said, where is the turnaround that was on your notional plan? Correct. So he inserted that turnaround and now he's asking for a waiver for that turnaround because it, it wasn't, after he realized that the 40 foot buffer was in there after we read <clears throat> what we had written versus the master plan, right? he's here because we made the comment that you need to make it look like what you gave us. Right, yeah. Basically, you're absolutely right. Uh, showed the T turnaround in accordance with the master plan. Of course, as you point out correctly, what's happened is that there's been a 40-foot buffer installed. So really, it's in the same place as it was on the master plan. It's just that now we have a 40-foot buffer in that area. And that's the only buffer down that whole property line is that one turnaround? Is that what I heard you say? That's the only buffer that we've got, yeah. yeah. Uh, we haven't I'm, reviewed the I'm other. I'm sorry. Parts. I believe what you're trying to answer the question is, is the only proposed modification to that buffer? Right. Down that whole oh, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I misunderstood what you said. Check, check me if I'm wrong, but I believe that is you correct. said there would be no other modification to the buffer along the Oxford Run Ditch. That is correct. That you but draw it so that everybody knows what you're talking about, and then I know what you're talking about. Okay. That is the only area that will extend into the 40-foot buffer. Okay. And that's the area down, of the T turnaround. Oxford Run ditch line. Yeah. I'm sorry yeah. I misunderstood your question. Thanks. But. No, I appreciate it. That's all I got. What are other questions? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, talk to him. Yes, sir. Could you I, explain I can't to do. us, please, how the taxation works with the buffer zones? So, right with you, I'll, I'll defer it to our until immediate past Commissioner of the Revenue who can actually answer that with authority. I know the answer, but I defer to him if that's all right. Yes, sir. Thank you. Graham? No more sleeping in the back of the room. <laughs> I was just trying to figure out where you wanted me to go and exactly what the question was as far as the... The, uh... the question relates to the buffer areas, whether or not they are taxed. Yeah. And, um, and I know the answer, but I'm going to defer to you. They, they will indeed be taxed. The, uh, the buffer area will actually be included into the overall uh, ownership of each individual lot. So including like the clubhouse, for instance, which will be owned by the HOA. Mm -hmm. Let's say the clubhouse is worth $250,000. That will be spread amongst all the homeowners in that association, including yep. the value of the land for the buffer. So, so as, you're, as being a former commissioner of revenue, <laughs> Which, which do you think would provide more value? Would it be a larger lot or a 40-foot 40, 40 strip? I would say that the, uh, the larger lot would carry more value. That's my opinion. Thanks. But the basic question, if I understand yeah. your question, Mr. Hux, is, is would the buffer area be taxable? And the answer is yes. yes. If, it's, if it's owned by the HOA, Graham's explained how that is has spread out over the other property owners. If it's contained within an individual's property, then they would be assessed with that particular property. Correct. Right. That's correct. Yeah, I had no doubt about that. The um, and who would maintain it? Like the BMPs that are owned by the homeowners associations. If it's uh, well, if it's within each lot, obviously the homeowner. But if it's if it's in a buffer area owned by the HOA, it would be maintained by the HOA. 
I uh, did have one other question, please. Uh, the 2015 plan that was approved, did that plan include the buffers? There are the only, no the only buffers that were included in that was the modification of the city hall that went from 40 to 15, rear yards only, and from there, uh, down there. No other buffers were really addressed except for the front buffer that went down from 60 feet down to 25. Well, then at, at what point were the buffers added? Well, the buffers were added when we started getting into the site plan phase and reviewing the plan unit development mixed use uh, district requirements. And that's where that 40 foot came into play. But they were not originally included in what was approved in 2015. They were not. They were not. So the buffers were added after the fact. They were kind of hidden. I'll, I'll just I'll just protect uh, everybody here. That they were. I think it was a miss that the buffers were not on the original land use plan, but the words for the buffers were contained within the ordinance. Right. And we looked at what went in 2015, and I say we, I wasn't here then, but it was looked at as a conceptual plan, and that's really what we looked at. We looked at the plan as, as a concept, and we said, you know, basically, we, we like the concept, uh, and then the, the work of rolling up your sleeves and actually applying the ordinance came as we moved into the site plan phase. But was the developer aware that the buffers were included? If, if, if not in pictures, was the developer aware in words? We'd have to ask the developer. It, yeah. It, it's in our ordinance, and an experienced developer should be able to, just like I did, go online and pull up the ordinance and read, a 40-foot wide landscaped or natural wooded buffer shall be maintained around the perimeter of the project area. And it's okay. in, it's, that's by law what any developer that develops in that development has to abide by. So essentially the master plan, which was the first page, the number of units that were submitted there were submitted not in compliance with the ordinance. And this is where the loss versus addition confusion comes in. If you go back to the first page, Wally. Okay. All the way, all, the top, take it from yep. the top. Okay. Take you to the top. All right. Sorry to give everybody a headache. <laughs> so that currently is not in compliance with our current ordinance because our current ordinance requires a 40-foot buffer and that has units built, units included there that are not in that buffer. If they were to redo that and be in compliance with the plan, then they would not be showing all those units. So really, if that were redesigned to match what the ordinance says today, those units would come out and then they would present that to us and say, we would like to reduce the buffer and add these units. Instead, it's kind of happening backwards. They put the units in, um, took the buffer out, put the units in, and now are saying, well, now we're gonna lose these units if you don't approve it. But really the units shouldn't be there to begin with because the ordinance doesn't allow them to be there if you draw that according to our ordinance which they're responsible for reading. Well, we're, and then, we're talking a lot for the developer here. So the question was to the developer, were you aware of the 40 foot buffer? Okay. Yes, they should uh, be. Okay, so in 2015, we were all on this council together, right? Well, I wasn't. Okay. I was on right. school in, 20, <laughs> in 2015, they came to us and asked for a waiver on the York County side, right? And it was given. As yes, well it as was given. Yeah. I, right. I, and, and I think a lot, several of the council members said there would be no additional changes, that this would be it, that would be it, what was allowed at that point. I mean, my feelings are, I think uh, error was made, that it should have been drawn with the buffers in there, it should have been drawn compliant to the ordinance, and obviously an error was made, and sometimes you have errors that cost money when you do business, that happens every day in business. And I don't feel, as a council person, that it's my obligation to fix a business error that 
that they made and left units out and, you know, reduce our buffers so that they can add those units back in and not lose them. You know, that, that was a, an error on their part for not drawing this in compliance um, because they, they should have read the ordinance and known that, that the buffer was there. Okay. Any other questions? Good. Uh, well, I, no, I just want to make sure that I got <coughs> everything. One comment here, J just to be clear, okay? What we're saying here, should, should we allow that 40-foot buffer to go to a 10-foot buffer? What we would be doing is allowing that turnaround to be built and extend into that area with a 10-foot buffer on the other side of the turnaround. That buffer would actually extend up to 35 feet into the 40-foot buffer. There would only be five feet left. You're talking about the T turnaround. Uh, 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 but, but which way would, it, would we, have, we, would we be concerned about drainage? Would the drainage go into the development or away from the development? Well, at the Planning Commission, uh, the applicant's engineer spoke to that, and I don't really want to put words into their mouth, but I believe that they talked about designing it away from going in Oxford well, Run. But I'll a, let them I, I, I that. watched the Planning Commission meeting, okay, okay, uh, not in person, but on TV. Okay? And that's what I thought I remembered, but um, I wasn't sure, and these numbers get confused in my mind. I'm okay. sure the applicant will address that so, but. But the drainage goes into, and, and that would be assured? I think that's a requirement that uh, it, your post, your pre, uh, post development runoff cannot exceed pre development. Right, pre and post have to be the same. Of course, since 2004, we actually have water quality uh, provisions as well. And so that's we, the only place that would occur? Yes, if, if I'm understanding your question right, yes, that is the only place that there would be an incursion into that 40-foot buffer, uh, aside from, you know, the application back here, which we already talked about. But yes, that 40-foot buffer right there, and I don't have a site plan up here, would be maintained otherwise, yes. And that will be owned by, if we approve that, that will be owned by the homeowner, the 40-foot buffer? Yes, yeah, sure. That's, that's shown separate from the lot, so yes. Is that right? So we could mm. keep the T turnaround and the 40 foot buffer and the developer and be in compliance with the ordinance, and they would just have to take out one or two townhomes to keep the buffer and have the T turnaround. That's okay. correct. Well, hold on a minute. You say that, but you said this is the only buffer amendment for the down Oxford Run. You just answered that question a minute ago. Yes. So he can build all those homes, and the 40-foot buffer will be contained within whose property? That's correct. Uh, what I was trying to answer is that if you did not allow this to protrude into the buffer, what would the alternative be? The alternative would be building it down in this area, and that would cost one or two times the cost. But, but yes, everything I said about the property is certainly true. Yeah. And I, I know Mr. White, who is, ab his property abuts modification in one area. I, I don't know if he's here tonight. I know he spoke at the Planning Commission and said he would prefer that we not provide that, that modification. Mm -hmm. um, so that does weigh on my decision. I mean, Mr. White may choose never to develop that property while he's alive, but he did say he would want that maintained for his, whoever get you know, his family members that have that lot in the future, that they would have the benefit of that 40-foot buffer. Did, were you guys able to talk to Mr. the tutors? Still couldn't get in touch with tutors. Uh hard one to catch but again they were notified uh, not once but twice uh, yeah yeah excuse me I didn't understand your comment would you say it again for me please oh mr. white who oh, owns white. the property abutting the modification yes, one area know. spoke at the Planning Commission meeting and requested that we that the Planning Commission not 
recommend approval for that, that he wanted to maintain <coughs> that 40-foot buffer along the edge of his property, whether it was for him or for his legacy family that had that, that property. That, that's, that doesn't have anything to do with this request for the modification on area one. That's that, that's a area four, right? No, his property abuts area one. Modif Will you go back to that, Wally, yeah. to show the yeah, map? Yeah, that's it, area one, right. If you show and the map that where it shows the all the houses. Yeah, um, let, me, uh, let me go for it. I'm sorry. One of the mods. See here. Yeah, Mr. White's property abuts that area. Right. Correct. Oh, I did have a question about the T turnaround Wally. <clears throat> can can the city put up uh, no parking signs there so that people cannot I mean, because that's for emergency vehicles, so that because that's the only way that, you know, because that street goes down, mm -hmm. the emergency vehicles have no other way to get to those units at the end of the street other than to go down that street, and that, that's why we need the T turnaround. Can the city put up no parking things so that people can't park in that and block it? <clears throat> I'm going to ref uh, I might defer to the, the chief on that. Uh, well, I mean, I believe. You know, the answer is if it is a, a part of a public street yeah. that I have the authority under the, the city ordinances to put up things like that when it necessitates there's a public safety reason. Like the, the, the trick, of course, is that it's part of the public street system and these are anticipated to be yes. public streets. Yes. I think we did that at the end of Hunt's Neck in that turnaround. Yes, sir. You're all correct, mm -hmm. right? Okay, back to the T-turn around that goes into the buffer. Okay. And we're going to change the undeveloped surface to impervious. And then we're going to run that into like a drainage uh, holding pond or something. Again, the applicant can probably respond to this better than I, but uh, several uh, comments were made to the Planning Commission about taking the drainage, moving it back, and moving it into existing drainage for the... Okay, uh, well, my real question is, do we have any, or are there any water quality studies that shows a difference in, like, a wooded buffer area and the retention pond BMP system? Is there a difference in the water quality? You know, I don't know of anything specifically to give you, but... Uh, you know, that would be a question. Unfortunately, Ellen's not here tonight. She could probably answer that question better than I could. You know, I, I, I don't think I could really answer that question enough to. I just have one more thing in general that doesn't have to do specifically with the modifications. So, Wally, that ordinance that applies to this says that waivers either can or can't be allowed during, for different circumstances. And there's one part where it says waivers can't be granted, but then we have, then we have modification section 8.2.2, .2, which applies to all other ordinances. And that says that you can ask for a waiver or a modification. Modification, yes. And the other ordinance says waivers aren't allowed, right. but they use the word, were permitted by ordinance to use the word modification Right. instead of waiver. So I, not in regards to this, but I think going forward in the future, you know, whether you say waiver or modification, to be able to use the word modification and essentially make a waiver happen when an ordinance says no waivers are allowed is sort of a loophole in the system. And I think that's something as a council we need to look at changing because if in the section of the ordinance says no waivers are allowed, then no waiver should be allowed and there shouldn't be another section of the ordinance that allows that, that loophole to happen. The other thing I think we need to look at is adding some things in for landscaping. Like, like you said, we don't have any kind of definition now and I think that's something in the future we need to look at changing and putting in some definitions of what landscaping is. Yeah. And is this the only 
PUD uh, section we have in the city, or are there other properties well, we that a PUD, fall under uh, this? Waterfront uh, PUD ordinance, uh, which is separate from this particular ordinance. That'd be 8.3 of the uh, of the ordinance, but that's that's for waterfront. I mean, that wouldn't apply to anywhere around. Okay, here. so this is the only PUD mixed use. <clears throat> yes, and you're right. We do have two two different ordinance pieces yep. that That's that address it can, and can i can i take a shot at answering that question too sure we have two <laughs> overlay district areas the waterfront mm -hmm. and this one mm -hmm. and this one is larger than this development you show it that is. in another yeah, slide yes. it absolutely um, is. Yes. and this is the only activated master plan within either one cool. but the area is larger and the in the big woods area than the than the um, the confines of this particular development. You can look, for example, at the Tudor property that we have referenced a couple of times. If you put your the Tudor property is within that larger district, yes. as is the property across Victory Boulevard. Right. But neither of them are in the legacy uh, master plan area. Okay. So we do have other areas that fall under that ordinance that could come to us and say, "Well, you you allowed them to reduce their yes, buffer, so why won't you allow us to reduce our buffer?" You did it for them. Why not do it for us? Well, you might want to ask Mr. White when, mm -hmm. if, if Mr. White really wants that because it's going to affect him too. All right. Anything else? Okay. okay. All right. That's, Two that's minutes uh, that completes the work session, but we've got to do a quick turnaround here. So we'll just leave these tables yeah, set up. Everything set up.